there are ministries in Christian churches that proclaim that they are there to help LGBTQ people, but actually intentionally perpetuate false and damaging stigma and stereotype against the LGBTQ community. Whether you are supportive of same-sex marriage and transgender identity or whether you are not, you want to avoid these kinds of things. You want to be able to recognize them when you see them and be able to understand why they're so false and problematic. We've talked before about this ministry. They call themselves Coming Out Ministries, and you can see more videos about them on my channel in the playlist for conversion therapy. This is a clip from a video where they're spelling out their three main goals and they're describing the third. Mm -hmm. And so we go beyond our testimonies uh, through our study and our experience in the study of the Word of God. Uh, we, we work to educate the church. For example, we, we address uh, certain myths that are out there uh, because we believe truth can bear scrutiny. Mm -hmm. uh, truth is fact. Mm -hmm. And fact cannot be altered. Gravity works without, I mean, y there's no contest on how gravity works. It doesn't matter what you believe, it's going to work right. the same way all the time. And truth is that way. So we believe that truth can bear scrutiny. So we take various statements that come, uh, for example, out of the LGBT culture, that people are born this way and once gay, always gay. It's an acceptable alternative lifestyle. It's not uh, associated with promiscuity and um, it's a safe culture and all of that. And so we take these statements and then we just present facts from mm -hmm. science, mm -hmm. from research. It's going to be facts from science, y'all. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, one thing he started off by saying, we go beyond telling our own stories. And this is important because they're common way of defending themselves when people say what you're doing is damaging, you're, you're doing conversion therapy, what you're saying is harmful to the queer community. They constantly fall back on saying, but we're just sharing our own stories. Shouldn't we have the right to share our own stories? So he's saying explicitly here, we go beyond our own stories in order to do what he calls addressing myths. Of course, We'll see what I think about. I'll tell you what I think about some of those supposed myths um, as we go. Surveys, and, and we go back to the history of where this born gay ideology even came from. It was totally political. It is not scientific. It's not biblical. It's political. To it was political. And the reason it was political is because there were laws that were causing people to be thrown in prison and lose their jobs, causing them to lose custody of their children that were in place against the LGBTQ community. So the only way to change a political system that is already geared against you is to be political. It was a ma matter of survival. They, they didn't even have, back in the day, a place where they could safely assemble without getting raided by the police and beat up and thrown in, in prison. So um, that is why it was political from the beginning, not because we were just trying to be political, but because the politics were already aligned against us in a way that made just even being alive and living pretty difficult. Get special privileges as a legal minority status. And, and so we, we present all of this and then we also take the word of God and say, now let's look at what God has to say about that statement and this statement. So we, we really scrutinize the issues from that perspective. I um, wish. And, and we, we educate the church and so many people, it's amazing how many people have bought all of these lies from the enemy mm -hmm. that even in the church, we always get this question in a Q&A period. Well, what about those people who are just born that way? Mm -hmm. I mean, the church has been drinking this in and yes. has been affected mainly because of not being educated. Mm -hmm. People are asking that question because they know people who have experienced an inability to change their sexual orientation. That's why they're asking that question. It's not because they're ignorant. It's it's because they know that this is the common, most common, that anyone to claim that their sexual orientation changed, like 
these guys don't generally even do that. So I don't know what he's talking about. It's not ignorance. It's not a willful ignorance. It's just a lack of information. Mm -hmm. And this is why the term coming out is taking on such a broader meaning because mm -hmm. it's not just coming out of gay or LGBT or, or pornography and masturbation and sexual sin. It's about coming out of addictions of many kinds, mm -hmm. coming out of the addiction of sin itself. Right. Yeah, so this kind of um, association with being queer with addiction is really common for these guys. Sexual orientation is not an addiction. You can have an addiction, you can have a sex addiction and be attracted to the same sex, just like you can have a sex addiction and be straight. You can be straight and have a sex addiction to the same sex. Human psychology is interesting, y'all. But just to throw the whole queer community into the basket of, of like addiction and just to make all these associations is really irresponsible and very stigmatizing. So kinship, they celebrate Bisexuality Week. Well, that's interesting because they promote that um, monogamy is the desired effect. So if you're bisexual and you're celebrating bisexuality, do you see the contradiction there? Oh, so it wouldn't be a contradiction because sexual orientation does not equal sexual behavior, something that they should know. Uh, just like if you say you're heterosexual, it doesn't mean that you're definitely having sex with someone of the opposite sex. It just means that's the way you're inclined. There are bisexual people who are celibate. There are gay people who are celibate. There are straight people who are celibate. And it, it just, it doesn't correlate. So this is an extreme level of ignorance for someone who is saying that they have a ministry to the LGBTQ community. You should understand what the B means. Just saying. Second, kinship does not promote monogamy as the desired outcome. As he said, kinship does not attempt to um, set an ethical standard for what its members should do. It's a support organization that is there to care for queer people um, and is not there to continue the judgment that has been perpetuated by the church. So um, that's just the misunderstanding of kinship. Now I get to talk to you about an organization I absolutely love, Seventh-day Adventist Kinship International. They're especially focused on Adventists, people of Adventist heritage, or who are connected to Adventists and who are either allies or LGBTQ people themselves. They're an affirming organization and they have meant the world to me. When I was first coming out, it was a really difficult time and they were absolutely there for me. People from the organization talked to me. I'm a member, which gives me access to all kinds of social media groups. I watch their YouTube channels, the resources on their website. It's a fantastic organization. I suggest you check them out. Link in the show notes. It's not just that LGBT is wrong. It's the fact that it goes against the image of God. What is the image of God? The sexual relationship between one man and one woman in a committed relationship. Giver, the image of God is expressed in a relationship of one man and one woman in a committed relationship because God is committed to his creation. And when these two people come together as God ordained and biologically created them, it brings forth life. This is my least favorite teaching of those who are anti-same-sex marriage. It is, ah, uh, it says, let us create man or humanity in our own image. Um, and in their own image, they created them male and female. He created them. That does not mean that marriage is the expression of the image of God. It's just that male and female, he created them like that people were created male and female, like that men and women are equally created with the dignity to reflect the image of God, as opposed to some other religions that actually teach that only men are created in the image of God and that only men reflect the image of God and that women are this kind of broken, distorted picture of God. So to say that the image of God is heterosexual marriage and all this other stuff that he added in that's not in the text at all, he's just biologically male, biologically female, and there's a, like heterosexual sex. Like it's, it's basically to negate the clearest image of God, according to scripture that we have in the Bible, which is Jesus who, um, was celibate. 
but Jesus is like the greatest example of the image of God that there is. So t- to me, this this just destroys the dignity of queer people. This, like, I think actually that the ethics of the entire Bible can be really traced back to this idea that we are created in the image of God. This is why we ought to love God. This is why we ought to love one another. This is why we ought to recognize the goodness in one another and have hope and faith in that. Like this is foundational to Christianity. And you're so eager to prove your theology that you want to throw all that out and you just want to reduce it to sex. It's wild. And it's incredibly destructive to the dignity of queer people. Listen. If you are gay or bisexual or transgender, you do not lose one drop of the image of God in which you were created. It is your inheritance because you were created in the image of God and you can't lose that. That is who you are. Human dignity. It's at the heart of everyone. Don't tell your don't let anyone tell you anything any different and definitely do not allow people to water down that basic foundational concept by just like (laughs) reducing it to sex it's wild so what happens when two men come together sexually no life what happens when two women come together sexually no life what happens when a transgender has a hysterectomy transgender or person. destroys their, their uh, sexual anatomy? No life. Now the de- What happens when a person is celibate? No life. The devil came to do three things. What is that? He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Nothing steals, kills, or destroys this precious gift or the image of God than does sexual sin. And that's not limited to LGBT pornography. Under this argument, contraceptives are also wrong because what happens if the man uses a condom? No life. What happens if the woman is on birth control? No life. The the inconsistency of this, like I don't think he's saying, you know, that people can't use contraceptives. Also, if people just don't have sex or don't get married or are celibate like Jesus was, no life according to his definition of life. It's not immoral to choose not to have children, though. Like, it's actually something the Apostle Paul advocated for. So if we make homosexuality exclusive and we pull that group out and we say that you can identify by your sin temptation, then why don't you identify as a gossiping Christian? Why don't you identify as a porn-addicted Christian or a, or a, a, a murdering Christian, right? Or a sinner saved by grace. Christians do that all the time. I just... I mean, the, the throwing in of, of, of being gay with, like, murder, it's just like, can we stop doing that? Can we just please stop doing that? These people do presentations to children sometimes. Children. And they're making these kinds of irresponsible associations. It's just very deeply stigmatizing. It's not okay. I have another presentation talking about the myths and facts of homosexuality. And unfortunately, it is a fact that among the gay population, there's a much higher use of drugs. There's a much higher rates of depression and suicide. So unfortunately, um, I can't, you know, because there is a lot of drug, a lot more drug use with the LGBT issue than there are with other people. So that is a fact. And I'm not just making the association. That's just the way the, the reality is on that. This is just the truth, and there's really no other way I could see it. This is not true. What he's talking about here is a correlation, and we have all probably heard correlation does not mean uh, causation. And what you do in order to determine whether there's causation, one of the things you do is you take people who are very similar and you compare them to one another. Um, you, so that controls for other factors. You know, like you control for education, socioeconomic status, um, you know, family size, age, whatever it may be. As many factors as you can control for, that allows you to come up with outcomes that are more reliable. Otherwise, you end up with something like this, like what he's saying, which can basically be equated to people who have more expensive purses. Women with more expensive purses tend to live longer. 
I'm making that up, but I bet you it's true. Why would women with more expensive purses tend to live longer? Because they have more money. The money is called a mediating uh, a mediating factor. So that is the reason why. That's the actual reason why. Because that's behind both of them. So the problem when we come to this kind of research is, yes, there is quite a bit more uh, difficulty within the queer community in terms of mental health problems, drug use, depression, uh, the risk of suicide. Yes, these things are very real. The problem is there is literally no control group. There are no human beings on the face of this planet who get treated the same way by their families that LGBTQ people are treated or the same way by the rest of society. Straight people are simply not treated that way. And there is actually no other group that gets treated that just horribly by their families of origin and by their communities. And the stigma that is rife within society uh, for queer people, which usually you're comparing like queer people to straight people. It, you just, you can't make that comparison until you get rid of all stigma and you get rid of all legal barriers and you get rid of messages like this. Um, and this guy trying to say that gay people aren't in the image of God. Like that's, that's the only way to do it <laughs> is to get rid of all the stigma. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, let's say that there are well-adjusted people that are homosexual living lives. You know, that's let's the minority say. of the group. I don't deny oh that God, they exist. Know. But if somebody came from drugs and homosexuality and sexual addiction and transgenderism, then isn't that a pretty powerful testimony? He's speaking about himself, by the way. Um, and he's saying, isn't it an amazing testimony that I've come from all these things? I, I mean, another argument could be made. Another argument could be made besides, isn't he inspiring and wouldn't somebody who's really well adjusted and gay um, just be inspired by that? Like the other option <laughs> is that we might think this is somebody who needs therapy. And so if somebody came from a well-adjusted home and they were gay for whatever reasons they were, then maybe they would see that and have hope that, okay, I haven't been that far. Maybe there's hope for me. Oh, the suicide risks are very high, much higher among the gay population. By the way, you can use the statistics of Norway and Scandinavia, and they've had gay rights now for over 20, almost 30 years. And the rates of suicide are still higher among the gay population than it is among heterosexual society. I have a whole study that has statistics. Uh, as a matter of fact, this, wh whoever the person is writing. <coughs> okay, so uh, they've had gay marriage in Norway for... Um over 21 years now not close to 30 um the study he's probably referencing is the one that i've seen conservative reference over and over and over again which was actually done in 2001 and shows uh, mental health problems in the queer community and and it's i've heard it again and again been said well there's no stigma there like they have all the same rights so that study was published in the spring of 2001 and marriage equality happened a few months later. So uh, the interviews for the study would have taken place probably a couple years before that. So um, very irresponsible misuse of the data. Uh, if he's referencing something more recent, um, there is, I believe, some indication that there is a higher suicide rate among queer people in Norway. But the assumption that because marriage equality has been in existence for 21 years, that all the mental health problems would disappear is ludicrous. Most people alive would not have experienced that kind of freedom their whole lives. And those things have an impact. And it's not like when the law changes, human attitudes across the board just instantly and completely change. That's just not true. Bigotry sticks around in systems. You know, uh, the Civil Rights Amendment did not get a, get rid of racism. Like, you can't just pass a law and now everything's fine. This is irresponsible. <sighs> Completely irresponsible. And if, if you look at the research, there's a massive amount of research that correlates families who don't support same-sex relationships, who mock queer people because they dress differently, or trans people because they want to identify differently. There are massive amounts of research showing that this increases the risk 
of harm, that this increases risky behaviors, drug use. And of course it would, because we're human beings just like everyone else. And when our families don't support us and they reject us and they tell us we have to be alone, and even then you're a second class citizen because obviously you're not going to be treated the same way in the church, like, of course that has a negative impact. And the research shows that more support more support for same-sex relationships, for same-sex marriages, reduces those risks, reduces those risks. If you look for evil in someone, you will find it. And this is what he is doing, is looking for evil in the LGBT community to justify his theology. If you say that same-sex marriage is not okay, you have one of two options. One is the way you see God. You see God as someone who, um, you know, looks down on gay people who want to get married and, and knows that it would really be good for them, that it would be emotionally fulfilling, that it would help them to uh, better play a role in their communities, to be more productive, to experience that abundant life. But God looks down and says, no, nah, I made a rule so you can prove that you love me and you got to follow that rule even though it's really bad for you and it's going to hurt you. You still have to follow that rule to prove to me that you love me. That's one option. And that distorts the character of God. The other option is that you look at the LGBTQ community and absolutely ignore what the research actually says. And I'll put some links down below so that you can look at some of the research yourself. Absolutely ignore what the research actually says and go to organizations that intentionally stigmatize LGBTQ people and present this distorted picture because you actually, you have to show that God's law is not arbitrary and harmful. And the only way to do that is by stigmatizing LGBTQ people. It's looking for evil. And that's exactly what they are doing. It's just, it's, oh, they're, they're, they're implying that using drugs is part of being queer, that being depressed and suicidal is, just comes with the territory because we're such messed up people. That is the message of everything that they are saying. And it's deeply stigmatizing. And this message has no place in the Church of Christ. And it should not be preached from any pulpit or in any church ever. It's absolutely completely wrong. Thanks for being here and thank you so much for my subscribers. You are really helping this channel to get noticed. Uh, thanks for liking. I appreciate it so much. I am uh, really enjoying this journey with you and the conversations we're having in the comments and all of it. So thank you so much. And uh, if this was difficult for you to listen to, um, just remember that uh, God loves you deeply, that you are created in the image of God regardless of any choice you will ever make in your life. That is who you are. You 